The New York Jets head to London to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today we'll be talking about the Jets and the Falcons taking on each other out in London across the pond. Some early morning football this week. Before we get started, just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary NY. And if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast wherever it is that you get your podcast. Okay, so both teams are sitting at one and three, and both teams are looking to get in the win column once again, clearly, to get their season back on track. Both teams kind of in different directions. Jets coming off a big time win against the Tennessee Titans, a game that most people did not think they had any chance in because, well, they were seven point underdogs. As for the Falcons, well, they were supposed to beat the Washington football team and, well, their defense fell apart, which is, tends to be a story. We'll talk about that in a little bit. When making the comparison between the two teams, offensively, well, we know the Jets haven't been very good except for the second half of the Carolina game and the second half of the Titans game, but they rank 32nd overall in offense. Falcons not much better at 25. As for team defense, Jets pretty good. 14th overall in the league. The Falcons 32 worst in football. So Zach Wilson's coming off the performance of his life in his NFL career so far. It's still early. 297 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. 232 yards and both touchdowns came in the second half. Uh, that was one of the better half of you know, any, any game that I've ever seen from a Jets quarterback, it was really impressive stuff, uh, put up really big numbers, but I think he could do that over the course of a full game against this team because you just look at, you know, this defense, they, they struggle a, a lot, this Atlanta Falcons defense. It's not a strong suit. Uh, we know that their strong suit was the offense. It hasn't really gotten in gear. Uh, they've had two good games offensively and two not-so-good games offensively so we'll see what they get out of uh, their offense this week but just looking at what Zach can do I really think he could have his full breakout game we got a little bit of a preview in the second half of Tennessee and you know more on this later but I think he could have a big game this week against the Atlanta Falcons in London as I mentioned the Atlanta Falcons offense hasn't been that great Matt Ryan only averaging 6.2 yards per attempt. It's been a lot of underneath stuff. And again, the offense really only, you know, two good games, two bad games. They're coming off a good game, but they don't really have much of a run game. So much so that Cordero Patterson's really their, their main guy. I, to me, like if I have to worry about someone, it's him. And I know you might think, well, that's a little bit crazy. They have Calvin Ridley on the outside. I'm not really worried about Calvin Ridley. Maybe that comes back to bite me in the butt come Sunday. But my, my issue is the Jets containing a guy like Patterson in the short passing game? Because I'm <laughs> strangely confident in this Jets corner group. I know they're young. I know they're inexperienced, man. But put Price Hall out on uh, Calvin Ridley. I think he'll hold his own. Uh, they haven't allowed a touchdown yet. The, the Jets uh, corners uh, only, you know, safeties and linebackers have allowed cover uh, touchdowns in the, in the past game, but uh, Cordero Patterson in the short game, that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I think they'll struggle with because, well, we saw uh, against the screen pass and things like that, the linebackers struggle a little bit. Quincy Williams. There you go. He's a great, he hits hard, but does he get a little bit reckless sometimes and inconsistent at covering guys out of the backfield? Yes. So this is an area that I would think would be a struggle for them because outside of CJ Mosley, there's not a whole lot of consistency at the linebacker position. I also find it strange that the Atlanta Falcons really haven't used Kyle Pitts. I mean, if you're going to spend the number four overall pick on a tight end, you better damn use him. And they just really haven't, which is surprising. Should they have taken Justin Fields? Probably. If they didn't want to take a quarterback, should they have traded back? Definitely, but instead they stay put and took the tight end and they're not using him, which I just don't understand. But looking at this game from the Jets perspective, what do they have to do to win? They have to attack this Atlanta defense through the air. The Jets running game hasn't been consistent enough, but they have the potential to have a really big offensive day through the air because that's the weak point of this Atlanta team. When I look at this Falcons team, that's what sticks out to me is how, how do you beat this team? Beat them through the air. They've given up a ton of yards to, to to quarterbacks, pretty much. And pretty much every single offense except for the New York Giants has been able to put up points. They give up 30 points every week. Like, it's going out of style. It's insane the amount of points this defense gives up. Worst in football. It's just unbelievable. So if Zach Wilson doesn't break out this game, I don't know when it's coming. 
I mean, we, we got a glimpse of it, as I said, against Tennessee, but matchup wise, offensively, this is the one we've had it circled for a little bit here. This should be when the offense looks like an NFL offense for a whole game, full 60 minutes. So yeah, I'm going a little optimistic on my Zach Wilson projection. Usually I've been mixing in. I think I had him at like 180 yards, something like that this past week. Give me 24 to 35. So 24 completions on 35 attempts, 312 yards, three passing touchdowns, no picks. That's the most optimistic prediction I've given out through five weeks. Five. Now I went a little conservative on some. He blew my expectations out of the water. I have expectations again for this Jets team. Am I the one who's going to get burned? Am I the crazy one? Maybe. Maybe I am. But I look at this matchup. You have Elijah Moore coming back. I think he gets in the end zone. You have Corey Davis. I think he gets in the end zone. I'm going to say Michael Carter has a receiving touchdown of his own. I think it's going to be a big day for the offense. So moment of truth. Do I think the Jets win this game? I do. My score prediction, 30-24 to Jets. That's 54 combined points. I love the Jets plus three this week. I also love the over. Over's at 46. The, the Falcons give up 30 points to everybody. I don't think the Jets are holding the Falcons to under 17 points. Maybe they do. I could be wrong. I absolutely could be wrong. Maybe they do. The defense has been tremendous so far. They've kept them in games, but I think this is the week that the offense takes that step. So I got the Jets winning 30-24. to 24. I also like the Jets plus three. I am 1-2-1 one, and one against the spread. Let's go to Casey and see who she likes this week. Casey is also on the Jets plus three. After both of our losses, we took Tennessee last week against the spread. She's 2-1-1 one, and one against the spread. So we'll check in again next week, see how we do. I got you covered the rest of the week and, of course, on Sunday for this game. I'm excited. Jet fans should be excited about it. And guess what, man? Nation's going to be watching. There's only one game on at 930 in the morning. The Jets and the Falcons, is it a marquee matchup? No. But is it a game where Zach Wilson could break out on a big stage? Absolutely. So I'm excited for it. You should be too. Let me know what you think in the comments below or on social media. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you